Hey, my name's John and I'm a human doing. And what am I doing today? I'm fixing my dust collection system. I've noticed when I turn it on, sometimes the, the motor won't spin. I'm pretty sure it's a bad capacitor, but I have to check to be sure. But if you have a dust collection system and it's not working and you're getting a sound uh, kind of like this, it could very well be it's just a capacitor, which is a really easy, simple fix. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. There we go. So first things first, you need to know where the capacitor is. And in the case of my Delta dust collector, it really only had one place to be, and that was with the on-off switch in the same uh, electrical box as, as the on-off switch. So you can see it there. It's that little white canister. In this case, it's, I'd say, roughly the size of a Red Bull can. But depending on the motor, the size, you'll get different size capacitors. But I... I'm going to guess at least the majority of the dust collectors you're going to be running if you happen to have a different model. Chances are it's going to be the same style of capacitor. It may not be the same value, but the same style. So at first, when I first pulled it out, I wanted to be really neat with the wires, and I was going to try to pull the tape apart, but they uh, they did a very good job getting the tape on, so I just said piss on it, and I'll just rip the rip the tape off and, uh, and clip the wires because I, I was going to end up needing to snip them anyway because I'm not going to reuse the the crimp connectors. So I just gave them a snip and pulled them out. Before I get too far involved in this, because I am dealing with electricity, I will say if you're not comfortable doing that, by all means contact a repair person or somebody else you know that might be comfortable doing this kind of work. Uh, that is electricity. It can be dangerous. Uh, I have done this kind of work before, so I'm fairly comfortable with it. Uh, this capacitor here, uh, I, I did check. It's not holding a charge, so I'm going to assume that this is the issue. Hopefully it is. I'm going to go out and buy another one right now. This happens to be a 50 microfarad, uh, 50, 60 hertz, 250 volts AC. Uh, it's a fairly common capacitor. I should have them in my local electronic store. So I'm going to pick one up right now. But again, if you're not comfortable, talk to someone else and see if they'll help you out or contact a professional. All right, so I just got back from my local electronic store, which is Sale. Anybody that knows that. You could get your, your capacitors from Amazon or well, anywhere else you want if you have a Radio Shack. I don't know if they still exist. But if you do have a Radio Shack or Source or whatever it is that carries those. But like I said, the, the original was a 50 microfarad capacitor. I couldn't get a 50. I had to settle for a 55, which is just slightly more capacity. It's not a big deal. But again, these capacitors, this is the replacement. It's a little bit bigger, uh, mostly just in the, the diameter. So it's a little bit bigger, but that's not an issue. I also mentioned before, I believe that this is a non-polar capacitor non-polarized, so there's no positive, there's no negative. You don't have to worry which wire goes where. And the wires themselves I'm going to be connecting with just standard sort of push, push terminals, which are pretty common now in uh, sort of home electrical. You could use uh, Moretz, so the, the, the twisting style, or you could use like the they did in the original uh, installation for the, for the original capacitor and just use a crimp nut if you wanted to. As long as it's a secure connection, you're good to go. So let's throw it in. And yeah, I know it goes without saying, or at least it should, but I'll say it anyway. Everything is unplugged while I'm working on it, so there's no chance of me getting a shock. So obviously, if you're working on anything yourself, make sure it's disconnected before you start working on it. I mentioned I'll be using these push-type terminals. Uh, there's a brand name, but I don't know if I can say it or not. I don't know if it matters. But you want to make sure when you push them in, you give it a quick tug just to make sure that you've got a good, solid connection. Twisted wire is a little bit harder to get into these uh, these connectors than it would be if it was a solid core like you would be using your, say, a home like a 14-2 wire. But even something like these twisted wires, it's still not an issue. Just clean them up, push them in, and once you, you give it a good tug, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. So it's a good, safe connection, and it's a really quick, easy, clean installation. Sometimes with Moretz, if you're not careful, you can, you know, there's a little bit more, I'll say, finesse sometimes required in something like a Moret. But these here, I mean, they're, they're sort of easy peasy. I use them both. Um, it's just these happen to be at the top of the uh, top of the pile, so I grab them. Um, I'm not finicky about it. So again, put it in, give it a quick tug, and make sure you've got a good connection. Once it's secure, it's good to go. It won't come out. It might be worth noting as well that you can see on this particular connector that I'm using, there's three sort of spots where you can put your wire. It doesn't actually matter which one of the three you use or two of the three in this case, they're all the same. 
So that is that. The wiring itself is done. That's how easy this one is. So all I need to do is put everything back together. The only difference between uh, the way it was previously and the way it is now is the capacitor because it is slightly larger. The clamp that holds the capacitor in isn't quite as, you know, it, it doesn't fit as well. It still all fits in there fine, and I, I still made sure it was nice and tight and safe. But, you know, really, that's all that's involved in this. It's one screw to hold this, uh, you know, the, the panel back on. And then it's hopefully ready to go. Yeah, that's it. All right, so now that everything has been rewired, the capacitor is in. I'm gonna plug this thing in, see if it works. Uh, the switch is actually already on. I'm plugging in just via the wall warp here. And I'm doing that only because I mounted the dust collector up really high. There will be a wall switch mounted at some point, but I'm sure we'll get, that, get to that in a future video. So let's give this a try, fingers crossed. Perfect. So I've got suction, which means I can I can sweep my floor more easily now. All the tools are going to run. It's going to be safer for me, better for the air quality in the shop. And at some point, I do plan on making a sort of an, an air filtration system for the wood shop as well. So please like, subscribe. Hopefully this video helped you out. If you are having problems with your dust collection, if you're getting that buzzing sound from your motor and it's not spinning, could be the capacitor. So maybe give that a check before you discard it or before you sell it. Or if somebody is looking to sell theirs because of this issue, maybe you can save yourself a bunch of money and, uh, and just buy something and fix it. So like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'll see you on the next one.